Good morning. Hey, John. Hey, Timo. Hey, Gregory. Good morning, sir. It's been a while. It's been a little while. And um, is that who, who who's uh, who's region network uh, this morning? It is Emily Rogers hey, um, Emily. from the region team. Awesome. Yep, just filling in for Dave this morning. Good morning. Nice to hear you. Good morning. Um, I, it looks like there's a, a number of awesome, um, Gitcoin round 14 folks here, John and branch out. I see, I see Timo, I think Basin is, is in there. And, um, I see former grantees in there, Shamba and others. So yeah, excited, excited to be able to, to jam with folks about all the things that are happening. Um, We've also uh, got Deepa from Crypto Good, who's doing amazing impact DAO research um, as well. It'd be great to hear about uh, their projects too as we go through the list. Awesome, yeah. And anybody else who is uh, who's got great things going on, I think our intention with uh, today's Regenerati News Hour is to just, <clears throat> yeah, kind of be. Um, conversing and daylighting um, what's going on in the in the broader ecosystem, um, kind of sparked by and fueled by the amazing work um, that Gitcoin does for the community um, in this next round. So it'll be kind of a, a broad, a broad conversation and um, mostly focused on just letting people share a little bit about about what's happening out in the broader ecosystem. Um, I think um, before we dive into that, we'll we'll do a little bit of um, region centric news. Um, there are a number of different um, things in conversation in uh, governance, which I'd love to draw people's attention to. Um, as usual, just kind of like doing a quick quick roundup of what's happening in uh, region network governance. So maybe you know just. Something like uh, three or four minutes on that, and then we'll shift shift gears, and we can just kind of go through and um, let everybody introduce themselves, share a little bit about what's uh, what's cooking, what their vision is, and um, you know how it fits into this larger movement. Um, so um, does that sound good to everybody? Anything else that uh, folks who are already up here want to make sure that we uh, weave into the conversation, John? That sounds great. Uh, always up for it. Love hearing what all these amazing people are up to. And thanks so much for creating the space for us all to gather. This is really, really fun. Awesome. Cool. Um, well, so um, just uh, reviewing region network governance business, I um, the branch out folks successfully petitioned the community to uh, uh, create the branch um, climate wiki. Very excited about that. I'm sure that uh, Branch Out will speak a little bit about that as as they're sharing. Um, we have uh, we're just about to get a governance proposal up around the principles for deciding the currency uh, in the region ledger allow list. I would highly encourage folks to uh, chime in on that. That proposal is focused on just kind of setting the standards for the decision, future decisions to be made, as people may um, may or may not know, on Region Ledger, there is a an allow list. So we as a community decide the currencies that can be used to, to uh, buy and sell eco credits. Um, so that's going to be an active conversation and, and different stable coins and other currencies are already kind of petitioning the community to be listed. And so we wanted to just kind of have a, a meta conversation about what to be considering in that and sort of, you know, anchor that as step one and then be adding currencies one by one in, in the future. So please have a look at that on Commonwealth. Um, let's see. I think there's also um, a really nice write-up around Region Ledger 4.0. The beta release was cut. This is very exciting, of course. The marketplace is launching. The data module is la launching. DAO functionality in the groups module is launching. All of this stuff, stuff is coming in 4.0, along with interfaces. So people are going to be able to buy, sell, issue, and govern uh, eco-credits um, coming up shortly. It's very exciting. 
Um, we're, so, so go check that out, ask questions, comment. If you're technical, you can go dig into the code. Um, the beta release is cut there and, and listed. There's a link to it on GitHub. So go, go check that one out as well. Um, and I think there's also sort of a, a little bit older conversation, but one that I think is worth resurfacing related to if the community would like to be incentivizing liquidity provision as well as security uh, that, that Will's all created. So that's another one that I would recommend people chime in on and, and review. There was a lot of conversation about that about uh, six weeks ago. So those are the three that are on the top of my mind um, that I wanted to bring people's attention to. If, uh, if other folks out in uh, the audience want to bring our attention to any other governance related questions, uh, by all means, raise your hand real quick and we can, we can weave that in. Otherwise we can shift gears here into this uh, really fun ex exploration of what's happening out in the broader ecosystem. Um, right on. Well, I'm super excited to hear what's cooking. Uh, again, we've got Grant Rounds 14 moving along right now, which, um, yeah, I can't say enough about the role that Gitcoin is playing in this sort of emerging region Web3 movement, um, refi and beyond. And um, we've got a bunch of folks in the community who've got live projects there. And um, yeah, let's do let's do a deep dive into into each one. Um, I see Holly out there as well. I think Astral is live too, if I'm not mistaken. So we should get Holly up here as well to share. Um, so I'm gonna um, just kind of go from um, you know from my right in the little you know my little subjective Twitter reality bubble. <laughs> the person to my right is Deepa. Um, so uh, just sort of passing the, the talking, the virtual talking stick over to you, Deepa, to, to share, if you don't mind sharing a little bit about yourself and, and the project, and then um, you can pass it on to, to the next person. Yeah, hi, uh, Gregory. Thanks. And thanks, John, for having me here today. Um, I've been a social entrepreneur my entire life, and I'm really passionate about this, this entire space. Um, so previous, like I've I started at a really micro level working in the slums of Bombay, co-founded United Way in India, um, worked in Singapore. Uh, I was with Salesforce.org, um, managing their philanthropy for Asia Pacific. So I've got like a broad, broad experience in this space. And uh, recently I got interested in Web3. It's been a year since I got pulled into this entire space. And I founded a publication called Crypto Good, where I write about Web3 and social impact. And I've been tracking this space for almost a year. It started with India COVID relief campaign, where Vitaly Butrin donated like a billion dollars. And I was like astonished by the amount of money that was coming in. And I also knew that there are problems in terms of getting money into India, because since I worked there, I know that they need to have, you know, People, like foreign contributions need to be recognized. And I wanted to really see how the money is going to come into India to really buy oxygen and hospital inf infrastructure that was needed. So I started following the money trail. And really, it was so interesting that I just got deeper and deeper into the space. Um, and then I started looking into impact DAOs. Uh, and we are currently running a grant project, GR14 project, under DEI and climate, where our goal is to study impact DAOs and unlock all the learnings that the impact DAO builders have for the new entrance into Web3. You know, so pe because I feel like, and I strongly believe, and I'm sure you all believe, DAOs are a great model for organizing around causes, and it's going to be the future model for nonprofits and doing good. So we want to unlock everything, for instance, Gregory, you've learned building your DAO, you know, and so many other people here. Um, so we want to unlock all those learnings in terms of what was your motivation? How did you see the community? What, do you have tokens? How do, does the tokenomics work? Um, you know, how does the work get done? Like, just every detail that goes into running as a DAO in terms of executing the, your mission, we want to unlock and understand that and put, it, put our learnings in a book that we want to give it out free so that change makers in India and Ghana and everywhere else 
don't have to think twice before picking this book up to make their impact in Web3. So that's the whole idea behind this project. Love it. Super exciting and super important, right? To be able to kind of, you know, I think a big part of what we're all up to and what's so compelling about Web3 is, is, is I mean, there's, there's technological stuff that's exciting, right? But maybe more exciting than that is the cultural proclivity to learn in public and to sort of be um, valuing real positive change. So uh, this is really an exciting um, offering to the community. So thank you, Deepa, for sharing. Thanks, Greg. Um, are there any actions? Are, are you, you, you're live on Gitcoin round 14 and um, are you yes. sort of built? Great. So folks should go and just check it out. And, you know, I think all of us um, on the call, probably, I know I always try to go, even if you're giving just a little bit, sort of voting with our uh, ETH or DAI over there on Gitcoin round 14, just to kind of be, um, yeah, gui guiding with our social intelligence, that which we think is going to make a big impact in the space. So um, just to call that out. Um, yeah, just uh, have a look. The, the proposal is pinned on my profile. It's called Impact Thou's Research plus Book. We are under DEI and Climate Category, uh, under Blog, Education, Discovery Tag, um, and Thou's. So, uh, and we've got incredible support. Actually, I wasn't even sure how much I'm going to be raising. Like, we formed a Thou to study Thou, so I wanted to do it a typical Web3 way, collaborative, you know, not like single person undertaking the study, but like a group of people undertaking the study. And we've got about 15 amazing people from Web3, media, social impact. So we are all storytellers. We are media people. We are in Web3. And we are social entrepreneurs and climate activists who come together to actually do the study and own different parts of the book to produce a really great book to, together. So it's been amazing. We've got 80 plus donors so far. <laughs> I really didn't know how this would go, but it's been so amazing. Uh, this is the first time you're raising funds. And all these people signed up for this project without expecting anything in return. You know, like I didn't, I only had SBTs and a co app to offer them initially and a lot of learning, you know, when I did a call for contributors. So it's just amazing. Like we've got a really mission and value aligned team that's working on this project. Awesome. Yeah, super exciting. John, just, just quickly, Gregory, yeah, anybody who's here, you can um, promote your GR14 um, link by sharing this Twitter space as well. And that helps kind of cross pollinate and circulate. So I just um, retweeted Deepa's with the Twitter space link that kind of comes into the thread. Um, but yeah, thanks, Gregory. I actually have to bounce in about 15 minutes, um, but I really wanted to be here and connect more with the Region Network folks. Um, we have been super grateful to be blessed by the Gitcoin community for um, three rounds in total now, including this one, starting off with the Refi podcast. Um, was amazed by the generosity of random people on uh, the interwebs donating unconscionable sums of money and just the power of quadratic funding. So if you're here listening and haven't gone through the process yet um, it's really definitely worth it and in this round we're really focusing on um, the kind of founder-led impact community that we're cultivating at refi dow that is purposefully tech agnostic it's sector agnostic and it's geography agnostic and we're really looking to invest in building yeah communities that onboard people from the global south and really have the representation from the majority of people as opposed to you know the minority who've got um, the privilege that we've many of us have been blessed with. Um, so there's a lot of stuff going on. We're doing um, yeah, a series of founder circles supporting early stage refi founders to help them effectively find their place in the movement. And um, yeah, previously we've had somebody like Daryl or um, other folks leading these circles. And now we're kind of creating a self-organizing system that just allows any founder to come in the space, figure out what circles are currently running, um, start a circle to help meet their needs and to kind of organize around peers that are at similar parts of their journey. 
So whether you're fundraising or just getting started or getting ready to launch, um, there's groups of many refi founders that are very talented that are meeting together and refi DAO regularly. So we just want to try and yeah, support these people and make it effective um, and just try and yeah, increase the number of founders who are experimenting in this space. Um, the other thing I just wanted to touch on is uh, next Friday, the 24th of June, is the first MRV day. We wanted to celebrate the amazing work that um, Region Network and other protocols are doing to make it possible to create um, scalable products using the power of digital measurement, reporting, and verification. And so, um, yeah, next Friday from 8 a.m. to 10 a.m. Pacific, you will have a chance to hear Gregory and a bunch of other folks in the space speak and then have a couple roundtable discussions. And, uh, yeah, it'd be great if anyone wants to join. There's tickets posted on the Refi DAO Twitter. Um, and there's also, like, a MRV museum event that will have to happen afterwards and roll on for the rest of the day. So that's all I will bore people with now. Um, we just last thing to close um, recorded a season one recap for refi podcasts. We've been a little bit quiet. Um, John X has yeah, taken some much needed space due to a pretty serious um, personal loss in his family. And uh, we've now come back together and are shifting gears a little bit. So that should be published soon. And season two is just around the corner. And so, yeah, if you want to come on the podcast or know some good guests or want to participate, let us know. We are looking to hire um, a part-time community and social media manager in the Americas and Europe time zone. We've got somebody um, from the yeah, Asia Pacific time zone covered. So if you're looking to uh, hang out and build community around refi, let us know. And otherwise, I'll pass it back to you, Gregory. And thanks so much for giving us all space to share and connect. Right on. Thanks for sharing. Um, yeah, super excited for what Refi DAO is doing to just kind of bring the community together and um, yeah, create safe space for people to innovate and learn. And uh, yeah, it's very exciting. So um, right on. Well, um, maybe uh, shift in gears here to um, um, Timo. Um, hey, man. Good morning. Hey everybody, uh, good morning. Thanks for putting this together. I, I feel like this is uh, the old days from uh, a few months ago, which seems like years ago. It's like Refi Friday on Thursday. Uh, so it's nice to see everybody here. Um, John, you, you didn't bore us at all. Uh, I, mean, I think the work Refi DAO is doing is super important. It's innovative, it's connecting, it's expansive, uh, it's abundant, it's really awesome. So thank you for everything you're doing. Over there, and Daryl, and, and, yeah, and the rest of the crew, um, super excited to see the MRV uh, event come together. But um, yeah, big shout out to, to Gitcoin and the grants rounds. Um, you know, I'm with Basin Dow. Uh, we're unlocking carbon and natural capital in real estate uh, using Web3, and we're building on Regen. A lot of people think um, you, you have to be a chain maxi, uh, but actually you can build on Regen and be interoperable with other chains. I think, you know, I think Celo is going to be coming and uh, definitely Ethereum and, you know, Regen by nature being built in IBC uh, allows us to connect to the broader ecosystem of other blockchains. Um, yeah, so, so Basin is using Regen network uh, for the registries, uh, the, the methodology. Uh, we're going to be minting and selling our own eco credits. We have a focus on, on high quality. You know, we call them bespoke or luxury uh, eco credits that are chock full of co-benefits, um, ecosystem services, clean air, clean water. Uh, you know the basin token. Is, you know we're calling it the treasury of uh, treasures. You know all the things that are valuable in life and uh, important that just aren't appropriately priced. Um, but you know going back to, to GR fourteen and, and refi DAO, for example, it's it's like given us a, a way to connect and ex explore and uh, see the new projects. And, you know, when we first got on the, the original uh, grants round, I thought maybe, you know, one, maybe two grant round, but, but here we are in grant round three. So I, you know, Ben was on refi Friday last week and something that, that just really stuck out to me is that it's, it's really helped basin kind of cover some overhead, do some pilot projects, pay some, for some attorneys. You know, it's allowed us to, to come up with our organizational structure, legal structure of how the metaverse links to IRL in, in the real world. So it, it's given us breathing room. And I, 
I hope Basin will reincarnate as Momus.eth at some point. Uh, if anyone knows Momus, uh, they've been giving out pretty decent-sized grants, uh, you know, anonymous uh, contributions to people and different uh, projects. So I, my goal is for Basin to basically come back and reincarnate as Momus at some point. But um, thanks to everyone for all the, the work, and thanks for having us. And um, just like Gregory said, every donation counts. It's not the, the amount of money, right, or the amount of ETH or die. It's just one one to one. Like go in, pick a collection, pick a basket, pick some projects, and just give a die or a dollar to each each project. That that's the beauty of quadratic funding, and that, that's how it's exponential. So thank you very much. Love it. Yeah, super exciting. And uh, you know, Ben, I see you out there. If at some point you want to hop up um, and and just jam and be the voice of. Uh, the official voice of Gitcoin. <laughs> Just let me know. I'll uh, I'll bring you up on stage. Um, I think we're all doing. I think one of the beautiful things is you know all these folks who are who are leveraging Gitcoin in order to build their projects and build this bigger movement are also you know we're do, we're we're speaking volumes to how effective it is. So um, let me just add you to the speaker. There you go. Um, yeah, and uh, just to briefly riff before I pass it on to Branch Out, um, you know, one of the things back in the day, this is actually about 18, we're about 18 months in, we ran an experiment um, hand in hand with Gitcoin around bringing quadratic funding over directly to region ledger. Um, I think you'll start to see sort of like native region quadratic funding getting integrated at some point in, in the future, maybe region 5.0 or so. Um, but that project <clears throat> bore a lot of fruit in that one of the communities that, uh, region, is, that region Network is a part of, you know, there's this nested networks within networks thing happening in the movement, I think, is called Open Team. And Open Team is a, an open source, sort of pre-competitive, co very collaborative initiative that's funded by USDA and other grant money in which R&D Inc. and OurSci and PharmOS and AgStack and all of these really amazing software companies are all building open source tools for agriculture data management to, to uh, you know, a new agriculture data commons, the ability to use data that land stewards are generating for um, improving their management um, for you know, relaying that up to policymakers as appropriate and parlaying that same data into um, supporting claims and generating carbon credits and other ecological assets is very exciting. And okay, you have this institutional environment that's federally funded in North America by the US government in which th there's this sort of agile cooperative group. It, it even includes General Mills. There's like big folks part of this. There's little folks. And you know, administering and flowing the money has always been a challenge in that community because you don't want to be overly bureaucratic. And actually we ran, this was like 18 months ago, we ran a quadratic voting for the distribution of those institutional funds to these agile software companies. It went so well that Open Team ran, wrote a $100 million grant as part of the Climate Smart Commodities grant round here in the US, which, which ended last month, and based the entire grant on essentially running a quadratic funding pool institutionally with corporate, corporate actors, governmental actors, to, to build open source software. So I just wanna sort of like applaud the, you know, the leadership in Gitcoin in, in sort of um, modeling and playing with this tool. Um, the cool work that Vitalik and Glenn Wild did back in the day to sort of bring it forth. It's cool to see these tools really sort of be piloted and take root and then maybe get adopted by institutions. So um, before we move on to branch out, Ben, do you want to just share anything? Just sort of, you know, shout out to, to Gitcoin here. It's our Gitcoin love fest. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I mean, I'm here to share the love too, uh, and I'll I'll just throw some love uh, to Regen Network for uh, being a partner in the climate round and and just being you know such a a, a light at the end of the tunnel for so many of us uh, you know who are looking for solutions in this space. So I I, I just uh, want to give a lot of love to to everybody who's here. 
Um, unfortunately, I also have another meeting that's coming up in a few minutes, but I, I just wanted to pop in and, uh, and say, you know, if anybody's got any questions or there's any way I can be supportive with, uh, with folks' projects, uh, you know, that they're trying to get funding through the Bitcoin Grants Round right now, uh, feel free to DM me, uh, you know, happy to ask, answer any questions quickly now, but, um, you know, my DMs are open, happy to chat uh, if anybody's, you know, dealing with some issues or, or has any questions. Um, yeah, I, really exciting right to see Thanks, so man. many folks coming through right now. sort of got a little, I, I lost you there at the very end. Um, I don't know if it's your connection or mine, but thanks for hopping up and, and saying hey to everybody. Super appreciate it. For sure. Right. I got to use this chance to bounce as well, Gregory. And thanks for seeing everybody, Ben. Uh, thanks. Great to hear Deepa and Timo and, and Ben. And yeah, we'll, we'll check in later in the week on future projects and region all the way. Uh, hope to see you guys again soon. Rock on. Thanks, John. Thanks, Ben. All right. Well, let's bring up uh, Branch out. Um, you're already up here, but... Um, yeah, how are you feeling after the governance vote on Regen um, to to move forward with the Climate Wiki plan? Yeah, we're um, really excited and, and humbled to have had such uh, resounding support from the community, and you know, really appreciate all the the help we've received along the way from people in the Regen network and foundations such as yourself, um, some of the people in the audience like Will and. I think Austin was here for a little bit, as well as uh, our partners and collaborators like uh, Kayla from Palira, Sev, and uh, a lot of other people um, who aren't here today as well. And it's it's been a really exciting process to kind of think about how do we have a knowledge commons that both is tailored to the specific needs of this niche community of refi, of this combination of crypto and climate and trying to change the financial, social, political, and other dynamics of how climate action happens and gets funded. And at the same time, build a resource that will be of general interest. So really anyone in the general public who wants to learn more about climate can find articles to dive deeper in uh, an accessible way to learn about different issues and also just to get started, connect to projects, find practical guides for doing things in their backyard, like making biochar, or setting up a compost toilet or whatever it may be. Um, so we're really excited and really appreciative to have had that support from the Regen Network and through the community pool funding process and also uh, looking forward a little bit down the line, right now we have enough for a small team to build a Web2 MVP, but eventually we have some Web3 features we want to um, build into, um, including a token that we're in, in talks with uh, folk at R&D about um, developing to support basically compensating people for regenerative knowledge sharing and to make it so that we can have that be collaborative and uh, shared common intellectual wealth and people get paid for doing that. Um, yeah, so we've been very focused on that, maybe a little behind with the Gitcoin round as a result, but we are in for GR14. Um, it's on our, our profile and um, would, yeah, really appreciate any additional help. Even small donations will go a long way. One of our goals with additional funding we get through GR14 is to expand our ability to have a multilingual capacity on the wiki um, so we think it's really important for refi to be a global movement for all the knowledge that is in english to be accessible for everyone around the world and whatever their native language may be so we have some partners we're already looking to work with on that like prana from refi by south and um Burke from Earthis Dow was a hemp farm, regenerative hemp farming in Turkey, and a number of collaborators interested in building Spanish sections as well. So extra funding through Gitcoin will help us with that. And uh, one last thing I wanted to mention is we also have on our profile an onboarding guide it's through GR13. I think about a third of our donors, maybe a dozen people, were folk who had never used crypto before. So we're a media organization. We made a quick little guide for like, how do you go from never having used a wallet to making a donation to a project you want to support on Gitcoin? So I uh, really encourage everyone to share that around for any projects that are also looking to onboard and uh, raise funds from uh, folk outside of Web3. Love it. It's super exciting. It's super important. You know, I think that's one of the powers of 
the refi movement really is how how much it resonates across the sort of like both the crypto tribal boundaries <clears throat> where here we have d- different groups uh engaging with different tech stacks or different approaches but with a common aim so there's that which is very exciting but also i think it's such a powerful opportunity for for reaching out beyond the normal boundaries of of i guess dgens who are speculating on on crypto out into the world where people can you know really resonate with a specific mission like climate wiki you know hey we want to create an open access knowledge commons around climate action <laughs> this is this is useful for everyone and um, to be able to fund it and and make that information you know available to everybody it just there's so many virtuous cycles with that so it's exciting to see how that how compelling that is beyond the normal audience and i really think that's one of our bigger you know one of the bigger things that we should be doing during this bear market cycle is really engaging beyond the boundaries of our little echo chamber you know enable to enable engagement with new communities to be experimenting with tools to be making their own tools maybe even the, you know maybe those experimentation processes lead people to believe that they don't need web3 for some reason that's great the 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 process of learning and engaging just super important so thanks for thanks for leading that <clears throat> um awesome well i see um i saw john out there from spark eco and it looks like he had to hop off i was actually wanted to pull him up here because we just got to hang out with uh with him at consensus which was super fun and we we got to jam hey sev i'll uh add you as speaker if there's other folks um out there who'd like to uh, Jam, John. I was just going to add add you up here as speaker if you wanted to share a little bit about Spark Eco. Um, Sev, good morning. Um, welcome up. Good morning. Hi, everyone. Uh, just wanted to share a little bit about uh, what I'm doing, and I, it's also uh, just kind of echo Thomas and branch out. Um, it's really quite awesome to see this proposal get funded. Um, I'm really excited to like follow this project and to contribute to it. Um, what I'm working on is very complimentary, and I'm going to be working with uh, Thomas to help uh, build out the how-to guides for onboarding into regenerative action. So um, the the project that we have uh, up for the Gitcoin grant is called the Impact App, and This is really how can we simplify the process of, you know, people plugging into all these different ecosystems that are valuing impact. Um, You have all these methodologies that are being developed at Regen, uh, Basin DAO, um, Nori, Open Forest Protocol. There's all these amazing projects that are popping up that have ways to, ways of compensating impactful action. And we want to make sure that it is as easy and accessible as possible for people to learn how to plug into that. Um, an app that really just uh, makes it very clear, filters like what actions are available to people based on what, where they are, what resources they have, what you know, land they have, uh, what, what's on that land. Etc. And and then filtering out you know exactly what actions they can take and get paid to do, and then how to do those things and how where to start, what they need, um, and then looking beyond that, like what is the progression, what is what is needed to increase the value of the actions that they're taking, in terms of you know if if you need to in order to. Uh, be eligible to plug into a certain methodology. Maybe you need certain expertise or equipment. Um, that what what that step what those steps are. The uh, educational piece, the integrating with other uh, MRV solutions to make it very clear for people 
what that progression is and how can they get paid the most for the uh, impactful actions that they're taking. So that's, that's what we're really excited about building. And I think the first step here is to build those how-to guides in the form of pages for Climate Wiki. So build that directory of, of actions people can take and, uh, and what those, what those how-to guides look like. Um, and in that sort of more web to website, uh, format. And then as we develop the app, uh, port that over and, um, you know, build that in a way that just very user friendly and, and accessible. The other aspect too is, you know, I've, I've spent a lot of time in this, uh, in refi these last few, few months and it, I've recognized, you know, there's a lot of projects out there that are fundraising for something specific and don't really have a good uh, form of MRV available to them, like for those things that aren't going to be turned into eco credits or carbon credits, where it's just you, you need some crude version of, of verification for simple actions that are being done. And there's some great uh, applications and projects that are you know, working in that area too. There's uh, Puzzle Planet and Orgo. Um, I think are, are a couple that have you know I've recognized. And so, getting people into those places, and then the app itself being able to be versatile and adaptable, and actually collect data for a project if necessary. So, there's a partner project that we're working with coffee farmers in South America. They're doing an NFT collection to raise funds for them to be able to switch over to regenerative farming practices. And we're going to do a pilot project where it's just, you know, crude Im image verification. And, you know, it's, it's a, a lesser, you know, form of, of MRV, but just uh, where it, if there's a counterparty that exists that's ready to pay for that action, just a simple way to verify that that action is being done. So, yeah. Cool. Thanks for sharing. I would, I would definitely in, uh, encourage you to sort of engage with the region network community on a couple of levels there. I think there's several different projects that, uh, you know, sort of the definition of eco credit expands all the way down to these very simple, um, you know, fo tr photo of tree or, <laughs> you know, like uh, land steward journal or, or whatever it is, mm. if, it, if it needs to be that, um, that simple, and then up into the sort of institutional multi-stakeholder peer review, kind of like upper echelons of, of rigor. And there's also a group of people that's a couple of years into building a regenerative land potential map, um, sort of data commons system that allows land stewards to uh, quickly assess if there are credits available or or connect with groups that are nascent and trying to develop crediting systems for the land use types of a uh, piece of property. And I know Timo has been thinking about this as well at Basin. So we're going to be, we're running a, a sprint over the next month to pull together a bunch of this work that's kind of been happening slowly but surely over the last couple of years on this front uh, to, to be able to do the geospatial mapping and kind of coalesce that. We have a couple, we have a beta that already was in use, but it's sort of like there's there's a round of, of product work that's happening. And I think at, at the end of the month, it's going to be easier to just sort of like share, hey, this is what's happening. And here's a suggested sort of public roadmap. Here are the components that need, you know, because there's a lot of work to do with what you're talking about. The, the bridge, I mean, in, in, in a reality, it's really sounds like several different apps. It's sort of you have the mapping, the analysis, there's some data management stuff. Um, there's data provision stuff and um, yeah, there's a lot there and it's all super important. So I'm excited you're starting to put your attention to, to all of that. It's so, um, so essential, right? Because if people can't understand the actions that, that, that can potentially lead to um, economic relationships that incentivize that regeneration, it's just really impossible to ever get started. So it's exciting. Exactly. And I, uh you know, want to 
I, I come at the at all of refi with the same perspective of uh, you know collaboration like it, it is at the highest level like if there's any ability to just like plug into something else that's doing that's working for this and you know trying my trying my best to like integrate and partner and collaborate and coordinate with people rather than just like build in a silo um and so yeah thank you for those resources and i, I actually hadn't realized that eco credits were that uh adaptable and, and could be you know issued on um, small scales like that as well um so that's really exciting to hear yeah so just to do a quick side tour so eco credits eco credits are DAOs, right so so every eco credit the eco credit class administ administration is essentially run or can be run from the groups module which means it's simply a community of people who are defining um issuance of a unit that relates to ecological health and so there's a data standard related to that but the, otherwise it's open right and so um <clears throat> the the ability for people to like basin is doing to sort of sort of lean in and say hey we're going to develop and administer a set of of credit classes um it can really run the whole gamut and so there are are people who are doing some very simple ones and there are people who are doing some really innovative rigorous ones so yeah it's um it's we've always wanted to sort of open the space up right for people to um engage in the right way, bring the right MRV tools and the right sort of, you know, governance around what methodology is appropriate in this case to, to sort of be making a claim about ecological health. Um, awesome. Uh, I'm seeing um, Timo wants to hop up and chat a little bit. Um, John, if you don't mind waiting for just a moment, I'm, I'm guessing Timo wants to sort of follow up on this uh, mapping and credit class convo a little bit. Yeah, j just on the Sev's comments about um, counterparties. I mean, I mean, to me, Gregory, the, the beauty of what you guys have created at Regen Network is this modularity, the flexibility, the self-governance, uh, self-service, basically, to create and test out your, your thesis, right? Of like, who is the counterparty to use, use Seb's words, like of who might be willing to pay for water quality or water quantity or pollination or, you know, air quality, you know, like some, it's like, what are those impacts that we haven't been able to, these negative externalities that we haven't been able to solve for, but, but they're, they're affecting someone upstream or downstream and who would be willing to pay for that and then connect those and then test it out. And, and whether it be a super complex methodology that's, very scientifically rigorous with third-party review or be it, be it something very simple like proof of elephant, right? Or proof of tree or, you know, um, I think that's the beauty of it. I, and I, I'm super, I, I just wanted to say like, I just would love to see more experimentation with it, you know, assuming the region governance is okay with it. Of Like just let, let, let's test it. Let's see who's willing to, you know, pay people not to poach rhinos. Let's, let's see who's willing to, to pay people to plant more pollinator species on residential lots. Like it doesn't have to be these big commercial projects or big agri agricultural or industrial size projects. It can be, you know, small plot holders, small land holders. I mean, you know, even Ivano, you know, TR has always talked about like this stuff can be, it doesn't have to even be tied to location. I mean, I think you know, a lot of us are thinking in terms of like, okay, it's tied to a specific GIS coordinate or specific polygon, but he's got some really good ideas about how, like it, it could like what's the proof of action or you know proof of result basically yeah there's so much exciting stuff here you know i know there's some people experimenting with ton years there's a there's a big community right now in region that's working on stewardship credits instead of outcome credits in which you know uh, practices that are directionally correct, whether it's rotational grazing or ecoforestry or agroforest, centropic agroforestry, um, we're able to track those so much easier, especially with the cool integration with FarmOS and RSI and some of these other farmer management tools where you can push like farm management logs and use those directly as a certificate, organic certification, these sorts of things 
can we some sort of be tracking that and building a trust graph around actions? And in fact, what we're doing in the, in those cases is building more and more and more understanding about the linkage between practices and outcomes, about the linkages that then, you know, that, that's it's so transformative when we sort of take a step back away from the tunnel vision of like a carbon credit, right? At the same time, you know, I, I think we're at, at Region Network, we've always... <laughs> I guess maybe even reluctantly been thinking we do need to be kind of backwards compatible with the current marketplace around carbon crediting and <laughs> the, the place where people are currently have their social consensus that something of value is happening um, while also realizing it at a, at a, from a first principles level that there are just tools people need to create a, a you know, to socialize and create sort of a legitimacy engine around what it is that they want to track and achieve on a specific place, or as you're saying, Timo, more broadly. Um, so yeah, it's exciting. Um, I, I bring this up all the time, Gregory, in conversation, this distinction between practices versus outcomes. I, I heard you talk about that uh, originally on the refi podcast with uh, John and um, I, it really stuck with me. Like I bring this up all the time now of, you know, valuing practices and actions as opposed to outcomes and what that, what the distinction between the two. And yeah, I really appreciate you sharing that perspective and um, yeah. Uh, Thomas, what's up? Yeah. I just wanted to chime in real quick on that is um, we're excited to be working on stewardship based credit methodology development. We've talked a little bit with Ned from R&D about kind of taking the DSI approach. Also, one of the Climate Wiki partners is um, Guy University and ICAFS, who is building a decentralized badge system, basically, for accrediting stewards. And so we're thinking about how that could kind of play into showing that people have developed the skills and experience um, to have those kinds of stewardship credits be issued and be able to have kind of the stewardship knowledge base in climate wiki and we're also working with Palira around making sure that as we're talking about stewardship we're acknowledging and valuing and empowering indigenous stewards um, traditional ecological knowledge and incorporating that into how we approach this so from a bunch of different angles super excited um, on that happy to talk more with others about it as I know we got a couple other people up here to talk about their issues. I don't want to take up too much time, but we're very interested and excited on this aspect of methodology development as well. Right on. I don't know if other folks, but Thomas, you uh, sort of broke up there, but um, yeah, thanks for sharing that stuff. Well, I um, Ed just hopped up and John hopped up first. So I, I sort of, you know, I think there's, Inviting uh, John, if you want to share a little bit and just hop in, John from Spark Eco, um, and then I, I definitely want to make a little bit of time and space for Ed, who is a farmer and has done amazing work uh, here in the Pioneer Valley near where I live, and so I, I definitely want to get his uh, his voice in here. But um, John, you just want to say hello and um, you know share any observations about this convo and just like your takeaways from consensus as well, and you know where Spark Eco is at. Um, yeah, no, thanks for, for having me up on the stage, stage Gregory. Um, <clears throat> yeah, maybe just a, a quick as I can, high level, Spark uh, Eco is working in the renewable energy space. So while we've been super inspired by everything going on in, in sort of the carbon space, we we realize that uh, there's probably a twofold set of solutions that, yes, we have to work on the carbon problem, but I think we need to also transition as much as we can to renewable energy. And so we have a big focus on accelerating the deployment of solar um, around the world. And so we started out looking towards funding solar, and we are still looking at new ways that we can use some of the cool tools we're building in in uh, in the Web3 space to, to fund uh, solar projects, particularly in emerging markets where they might not otherwise be being built for the billion people that don't have electricity, uh, but also shifting a little bit of our focus and, and really what our GR14 grant is all about is to fund some research around how can we bring renewable energy certificates on chain 
which for anybody that's not familiar are sort of a cousin to carbon credit, I would say, in, in some respects, just that they are uh, certifying that, that a megawatt hour of clean renewable power has been generated. And so we believe we can bring these on chain, that there may be opportunities to build a market for these and, and out of that uh, provide additional revenue streams to close some of the financing gaps we see in projects, particularly in emerging markets uh, where solar is needed the most. And so that's kind of what we're working on. Um, I think, let's see, takeaways from consensus. Um, you know, it was a, I spent a lot of my time around the hackathon, and I know that's uh, where, Gregory, you spent some of your time, though I know you were speaking all over the place. But um, I, I think what I'm loving seeing is that the refi space is, is growing, and it feels like we're just slowly kind of working our tentacles into every little conversation. It wasn't just like there was one refi room where everything was happening. It was like... You know, people were speaking on stages all across the place, you know, bringing forward these ideas of how we can use crypto to make the world a better place and use programmable money to really start backing the solutions that are going to solve some of the world's problems. And so um, I think that was really exciting to see that that we're not that we're slowly kind of moving out of our little refi bubble and really starting to kind of get in all these different conversations where I think we can start to bring it you know, more into the mainstream of, of Web3 and crypto and, you know. Hopefully, refi summer and beyond is uh, continues to grow because of that. Yeah, thanks, John. Um, Want to pass the the baton over to Ed? Thanks for hopping up, Ed. And um, um, yeah, um, feel free to share a, a little bit. And um, yeah, excited to have your voice up here. Hello, all. Thanks. Um, yeah, I want to share a little bit. I've been involved with the regenerative ag innovation community for many decades um and the last few years of course we've just made so many advances um regenerative agriculture was developed by farmers over the last probably 40 to 50 years um in the pat this past year especially um or this year because of weather conditions cold wet springs in the midwest droughts in the southwest all the fertilizer and chemical costs and shortages issues have really spurred the movement um i can't even guesstimate i'm guessing in the u.s we're probably around 100 million acres this year in active transition um farmer events have been going on farmer to farmer um weekly sold out um just tremendous results um to especially you know in trying conditions that's where regenerative agriculture really shines with the impacts of climate change and uh we've got technology advances rick haney who developed the haney soil tests which fits regenerative agriculture and biological activity as opposed to traditional chemical tests he left USDA and is now working with farmers more directly. Um, so he's able to do a lot more advanced work than he was able to do under the confines of USDA. I noticed the other day he has a new monitor for measuring uh, CO2 from where we're looking a lot at rewetting soils and the biological activity, because what we're trying to really encourage is carbon sequestration through the plant through the root exudates that's where plants really want to thrive um there's just a lot of things going on um we do need help in some technologies i think one of our gaps still even though we're communicating a lot we can always communicate better and more easily that's an interest i have in how to really connect farmer to farmer networks sort of a fungal network globally because we do work with farmers all over the world in sharing our information and what we're learning. So that's something that um, I think is really crucial. Um, we're also working a lot on decentralizing infrastructure in the food system. So like the four big meat packers that have taken over 85% of the processing in the USA, 
um, along with retail. We're looking at developing food centers um, for food processing, um, food distribution, food storage, food security, all those issues. Our farmers are regenerative or diversif diversifying their crops so much that we need a different infrastructure that can serve in a different way than just corn and soy. So that's something um, farmers are working a lot in doing that and connecting with smaller food system processors and more direct serve. And of course, they've got a higher quality of product too, more healthy product. So lots of things going on in the regenerative ag community. And I just hope we're so close in parallel tracks and I'm struggling to understand how all the refi crypto works. Um, I see the potential. I, it is the future. I think refi and regen ag is, is a marriage in heaven. Um, but I think we need to work together more closely, especially, um, you know, I, the refi groups identifying the leaders in the regenerative ag movement. Um, and getting into some of those networks and um, understanding what we're doing and helping us to, you know, each of us to understand which what each other are doing. Um, I think that's just going to be a huge benefit. But um, so far, it, you know, in our community of, I mean, the whole carbon credit thing drives us crazy because we realize the super importance of carbon, but but we're working with ecosystems and we understand that in the climate change movement, water was never properly introduced in the companionship with carbon. And of course, any farmer knows that water is at the core of the system, hydrological cycling. So as much as we struggle to try to get that into the climate, overall global climate movement, the focus on carbon is just so powerful that it's been hard to, really make sense of what we're doing into that so anyway i'll share that little bit and uh thanks so much for some time thank you well, you wanted to do you want to just share briefly ed the the name of your org so people can you know check that out and um well i anchor, anchor your shares yeah, I know you're, you're involved in a lot of stuff but yeah. yeah the org that you're aware of is a group called cisa community involved in sustaining agriculture it's in the pioneer valley of western massachusetts that was a organization that I helped found back in the early mid nineties. Um, the idea was that we, and we got a grant from the Kellogg foundation at the time and in integrated farming and food systems. That was the, the time period where we really realized that we needed to integrate systems again, bring them back decentralized and integrated farming too. Um, so, we set up an organization that would sort of what extension used to do, which was monitor food systems in local and regional areas. What was missing in for infrastructure, keeping the public aware of the importance of food, educating about food, educating about what the farmers are doing. Um, we became a model at that time for the Kellogg foundation. Um, I'm no longer involved with that group. I was involved in the setup because I'm always moving on and trying to work, you know, more parts of the system because there's so much that's needed to be repaired, but it's still a great model. Um, it's called C I S A CISA community involved in sustaining agriculture. You can look it up. It, they've drifted a little bit. It's become a little bit too much of a, just promoting local food and not so much around the infrastructure as in the business models of the infrastructures that we originally had um, in the program. But, you know, that's what does tend to happen to organizations. We, unfortunately, reductionism is so deep into our mindsets that really holistically looking and holistically being inclusive and all those sort of things um, are just a constant struggle for all of us. And so, um, but anyway, it's, it's, 
in Western Mass, we do have quite good infrastructure. We have a food processing center for fruits and vegetables, and we have local dairies still have processing so that we have local milk. Um, we have local meat. We have CSA. We were early area in developing CSAs. Um, and so it is a quite, quite nice model. And it's always been a good area in Western Mass here to do that because we have small farms with a long history intermixed between, you know, population. And of course we're an educational state here with a lot of colleges and universities and stuff. So education is something that people are always interested in. So that's a benefit and it's been a good model. Um, we have our ups and downs, but um, anyway, that's what I did around here. Thank you. All right. Thanks, Ed. Um, well, folks, there's a couple more people who, who were going to hop up um, to, to chat about their projects and, and just chime in. We're also running up over the hour. And um, I know I'm going to have to hop here very, very shortly. So, um, yeah, I mean, <clears throat> if, uh, if uh, Trace and Travis, if you guys can promise to keep it to a minute each... <laughs> So that you can get your voice heard and just sort of like engage, I'd be super grateful. And then we'll shut down the, you know, we'll just sort of close out at, at 12.05, basically. Uh, and super grateful for everybody um, hopping up and sharing and for everybody out there listening. So I'll just get that in right now and uh, maybe I'll pass it over to Trace. And then you can do a quick uh, intro to who you are and where people can find more, maybe more than anything. And then Travis, if you want to uh, just share anything very brief, that'd be fantastic. Sure. Thank you so much. Um, hi, everybody. Hi, Gregory. Hi, Regen. Um, my name is Trace. I am the creator and founder of CO2 Cult. Um, we are an NFT project that's aiming to empower artists um, and uh, help them uh, do regenerative action with their art. Um, and yeah, I I'll keep it very brief. What I really wanted to come up and, and talk about was we're putting on a, a GR14 Giveathon on Monday, where we're going to try to feature, you know, as many of the top climate and impact projects in this round, um, get them some exposure and and drive some some contributions to their projects. Um, we actually have, I see quite a few <laughs> familiar faces. So Sev is going to be a co-host. Um, John from Spark Eco is going to be presenting, and then Cohere is presenting quite a few of the people that were in here and then um yeah ben from gitcoin is going to be a co-host um so if you're not signed up yet i think branch out i think we haven't signed you up yet but we'd love to have you anybody else that that's spoken here and has a project or even if you didn't speak um we have like 12 or, or 11 spots left for for 10 minute presentations and we also have a couple spots left for co-hosts um, and with the co-hosts, it's, you know, you come on for an hour and the idea is to kind of try to get some co-hosts that have a little bit more clout, so to speak, in the, in the refi space to help amplify this, the spaces and, and get as many eyeballs on as possible and drive those donations. So Gregory, um, would love to chat with you if you're interested and yeah, yeah, we're really excited for that event. It's, it's coming together. Thanks. Thanks, Trace. Thanks for sharing quickly and also it sounds very exciting um yeah travis you want to just uh, do a very brief intro and uh sh share what you're hoping to to communicate with the community and then we'll uh, close out sure um i come from a, a degen g de background uh, not as in finance but uh, as an architect so i guess this is a question um to greg or anybody who wants to feel that if you're given an opportunity to speak or platform at a universities or uh, conferences where uh, the focus of AEC, architecture engineers and contractors uh, in the construction industry, or the SME, the Society of Manufacturing Engineers, who are essentially uh, creating more carbons, right? Um, what would you? What would be your message to th to them? Great question. I'll answer that briefly, and then we'll we'll close out. So. Um, I think the, the overall message, I think, is would be sort of founded on the paradigm shift um, and f from humans are 
intrinsically degenerative and destructive and the best we can do is to do less harm or mitigate the harm that we do to one in which humans are a regenerative keystone species and we can actually through our built environment through our agriculture through our economic activities be increasing resilience uh, be increasing biodiversity and i think there's some historical anthropological and and present moment concrete uh empirical evidence to back that this is possible and that it is a really radical shift and creates sort of a, a new approach to design and a new approach to how we think about you know the, the full stack of, of built environment uh, political economy um you know agriculture etc so i think that would be kind of what i'd be uh, wanting to share about and um yeah so thanks for asking thanks everybody for joining um looks like folks are already starting to hop out grateful for everybody's time and attention super excited uh, about all of the amazing work that's happening at gr uh that's being showcased in gr14 i can't wait to go in and and make my round of uh donations to just support reminder that uh quadratic funding you're really getting to vote with your capital so every tiny little bit uh, actually builds a significant match. So the act of participating and sort of joining the community is really guiding the signal to the things that we as a community think are really essential public goods that we're all going to be relying on in the future. So um, thanks so much for everybody that hopped up and uh, see you all next week. And in the meantime, uh, you know, go out, plant a tree, um, spend some time in your garden, <laughs> hang out off of Twitter. <laughs> All right. Bye, everybody.